Welcome to the Dandy Soap DIY channel. I'm Elizabeth and today we're going to do farmhouse kitchen towels. Do it yourself and we're going to solve the mystery on what this little hook is for. So stay tuned because we have more than one method of using this little hanger and we're going to be making us some beautiful farmhouse kitchen tile linens for our kitchen. To start off with, let's talk about this little hook. This first method is the folded tuck and this is of course loved very very much by those individuals with OCD and perfectionists. So wait for it. Once you fold it up and tuck it underneath, you can place these into your drawer and ta-da! There you go. Ready to use. Now number two is my favorite for toddlers and pet proof. I have a kitty cat that notoriously likes to pull down my towels, but if you pull them in this way, see no matter what, they're not coming off. And this one I call the right-handed helper. So the right-handed helper, as you can see, a little tug, and there it is. If you're left-handed, you'll do it the reverse. So for right-handers, bring in your side, pull it through the loop, tuck it in the back, straighten it out a little bit, and the little tug, don't, ta-da! Now, this one is method number three, the towel by the tail. And you can basically just tie this onto your apron. This is how chefs would commonly do it, or if you have a belt loop, run it through it. But there's also a towel by the tail option. You can take the very side there, using your loop, bring it underneath your tie, string it through, and now two people can benefit from the use of the hand towel. And of course, number four is the handy homemaker. Just toss it over your shoulder. That's what we always did. And there's always number five, the baby burper. How popular is that? And there's always the standard. So stay tuned because I actually have you three more options. Some people wonder why is there a hook on the towel? Chefs would tie this with their apron around their waist. And the second reason is so that they can dry in between use, which makes them more sanitary, building up bacteria in between wash, as well as they won't sour and they dry quicker. This way you can make them any color you like, but they're all pretty much the standard size. Okay, so this is the pre-cut. This is actually called toweling, T-O-W-E-L-I-N-G, that you can purchase at any of your fabric stores. And they will have a red and a white. They'll have blue and white. So I'm just going to use the pre-cut, per se, on this. And I've already cut this to size. These, when you get this in a yard, it is already 22 inches wide. And then you can have them to roll it off however long you want. So I purchased a couple of yards of this. And I've already went ahead and cut it. Uh, so it's already finished on the sides. And... All you have to do is just hem the top and the bottom, and you are complete with that towel making. But I'm going to introduce you to a new tool. For those of you who have sewn for a while, you may be familiar with the uh, hot ruler. This is by Clover, and it, this is a really, really nice little tool to have in your arsenal when you sew. This one is two and a half by ten inches. Now I'm going to show you how to use now, it. Now the Clover hot ruler is just like that that you may be familiar with it's called the hot hammer also by clover and what it does is it already has your measurements on there so it's real real handy and this one because the hot hammer it is awesome when you're doing blue jeans or hemming skirts or arms um, you know taking up the length it is just really really neat it's around a 1 16th of an inch it is also made of like a flannel, so as you can see, got some lint there, but it will not slip. See, it won't slide on your so fabric. So basically how this little tool works is you're going to lay it right where you want that hem to be. So if you want that to be a quarter of an inch, then you've got your measurements right here. you got your quarter, your half, and your three-quarter, and so on and so forth. And of course, you have these on the other side as well. And you can also do it elongated and a vertical fashion so the hot ruler for me is great when i am doing my quilt bindings or something like this and it holds up to heat so basically 
you can put it down to bottom. I usually do that at the top, but since I'm doing this for you guys on video, I'm doing it down at the bottom edge. And I've already ironed that, so I would have that quarter inch hem. Now, the cool thing is I will actually be rolling this again. And uh, I'm trying to make this swift. And so I'm going to put that quarter right there. And the iron will not damage or injure your hot ruler. And that's why they call it a hot ruler. And it is so flat and it will not shift. It's not going to, you're actually going to have to pick it up to move it. Now, because this ruler is, will not shift, make sure that you push your hem outward and upward. Because if you don't, you'll have pulling. And we don't want it to pull our fabric and because it will not shift. Um, you just want to smooth your iron upward. Okay, so now I have placed my second roll in this hem. And all I do now is stitch it down. And I'll do the other side the same way. This is a really, really handy device. And then, of course, there are those who quilt. I highly recommend doing the hot roller if you make things like we're doing today. Really, really helpful. And you're going to get that exact every time. As you can see, my stripes lined up without even trying. Another product I want to tell you guys about. You've been asking me about the products I make in my business. And this is from my Doc Dandelion Sore Muscle Sprain Strains Aches and Pains Cream. This is in the Doc Dandelion line, line, and uh, I do sell this from out of my shop. You can also find it on the website. Now, the great thing about the Sore Muscle Cream and the way it's designed is it has menthol and camphor in it, but it does not smell. It actually has a lemony smell. It's very pleasant, very clean, and it is a cream. You can apply it as you need it, and the main thing to be concerned about is if you need additional circulation in that area where you need warmth then i thought this be appropriate put the cream on and then drape something like a kitchen towel or a hand towel over the area if you need to um, bring warmth to that area and add up circulation if you need cooling such as you've strained or pulled a muscle apply it and leave it exposed to the air and it will have a cooling effect you can use this on a multitude of things uh, it is excellent for arthritis and rheumatism within 20 minutes of applying this cream your pain is going to be gone and you will have forgotten about it it's totally organic and breaks down really easy um, it's real easy to apply and a dab will do you so you do not need to be heavy-handed with this cream just basically touch it and rub it in and it will last for a very long time this is a two ounce jar it's one of the most sold at the dandelion soap herb shop so check it out on the website you'll find the link in the description so to box. add our hook onto our towel we're going to use twill tape and this is real easy to obtain i got this one from hobby lobby and if you go during their half off, you can get it for a whole dollar. And as you can see right there, you get over three yards. This is the half inch. So I've already cut my twill tape to size. And as you can see, I put an angle on it. And I went ahead and hemmed the finished edge down so I could attach my twill tape. And I'll just flip that up, park it underneath my edge there. And I always uh, backstitch right here just to give it a little more extra reinforcement. And voila, we have our little hook into the side and I have reinforced the stitching and I used red to match. Bear in mind, this is a wonderful gift that you can give. You can make several of these and you can embroider things on this or iron a decoration on it. If you've stuck around this long, you will see my bonus tip on how else this little tab is used. Coming up next. So for the bonus tip on how to use the tab on your towel is if you have a basket and you've made fresh biscuits or any kind of breads, donuts, bagels, things of that nature, go ahead and lay your towel in your basket. Place your bread buns inside to keep them warm. You would take your sides, 
and go ahead and lay them in there. Take this and, of course, pull it through the tab. Pardon me while I do this one-handed, guys, just to show it off. And this one has not been washed, so it's not soft and dowy just yet. It still has a little bit of stiffness to it. And you can lay that there. And it can also work as a little trapper keeper uh, to keep the heat in because the cotton will absorb any moisture and keep your biscuits really soft or even your rolls and buns. And, of course, it looks beautiful laying there just like that. So now we have our bread all tucked in. And this is just another way of using the tab on your towel. Stick around. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll see the next upcoming farmhouse do-it-yourself. So I have you two more. This one is called the decorator. You'll take the tail, pull it through your loop, and pull it pretty tight. And then when it falls down, it makes this beautiful, beautiful hanging towel. Number eight, and this is basically the last one, is on the ready. If you'll roll your towels up and use the tab to kind of uh, pull around the top there, once you do that, it just tucks down really, really nice. These look beautiful arranged in a basket and make an excellent gift. So here are you some ideas of how I did mine. This has three towels along with my wooden spoons and my whisk. Now I left this part in for the younger. This is my daughter and I had her to do exactly what I did. And she had a good time as you'll see this little smirk. And she is now demonstrating for you the right hander, also the pet and toddler proof. If it's pulled from the right side, it will not come loose. But, as you'll see here, she's fixing to demonstrate. Voila. If you pull it from the left, next to you if you're right-handed. And now I'm making her do the over-the-shoulder and the baby burper, which, <laughs> a little sarcasm there. Now she is going to show you the decorator as well. And you just pull it up. And if you want to make it a little looser, you can. So you guys, thank you so much for coming along. And until the next DIY, well, I'll be crafting y'all. Which method is your favorite? Leave it in the comment box down below. All thumbs up are appreciated.